Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us on today's webinar. This webinar is part of the Unpacking Coaching webinar series presented by the National Center for Pyramid Model Innovations. My name is Ashley McNish and I will be your webinar host today. Today's topic is examining essential PBC resources to maximize coaching outcomes. So let's get started. Um, with me today, we have an amazing presenter, Denise <laughs> Perez Binder. Um, Denise, would you like to introduce yourself before we get started? Sure. Thanks, Ashley. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining our Unpacking the Coaching webinar series. My name is Denise Perez Binder. I work at the University of South Florida in Tampa. Um, I've been with the National Center for Pyramid Model Innovations for a long time now. And one of my the main functions of my job through Cephal, through Taxi, now on NCPMI, has been coaching, coaching teachers um, as a practitioner coach. Um, coaching program leadership teams as a program implementation coach, supporting state level teams, supporting community wide teams as a program coach. So um, I'm excited to share a lot of new, new ish um, resources with you today to kind of amp up our coaching game. So um, we all know practice-based coaching cycle. It's um, what we do. It's what we love. It's how we organize ourselves. It's how we focus our game when we, whether we're going into classrooms, whether we're meeting with leadership teams, um, we want to make sure that we're always focused on those components of helping teachers to use effective teaching practices, really getting them to focus on those high leverage practices that are going to support engagement for all of the different types of learners that they're supporting. Um, we want to make sure that we not only are talking about and planning for these kinds of practices, but that we're helping teachers feel comfortable in applying those practices in their everyday routines. And so I don't know about you, but it comes to this time of the year around spring break, and we all have dreams of summer vacation, where we feel sometimes our teachers are hitting walls, but I think as a coach, I'm hitting a wall too. And I feel really stagnant in the way that I'm presenting goals, the way that I'm working on my collaborative partnership. I keep doing the same things over and over when I'm building goal statements, when I'm writing action plans, I feel like Groundhog's Day, like doesn't matter what the teacher, doesn't matter the classroom. I feel like I'm using the same strategies over and over again. Um, so today we really hope that you'll kind of open that bag of tricks add in some new resources, kind of refresh, like we do spring cleaning, right? Spring cleaning in our closets, and our cupboards. We're going to do some spring cleaning today in our coaching toolbox. So um, we know there's tons and tons of responsibilities that are placed on the coach's shoulders. We have to make sure that we introduce PBC, practice-based coaching, in a way that's going to um, set up that partnership, build that relationship with that practitioner. We have to start that PBC cycle. We have to start it in a way that's going to be meaningful for each teacher that we're supporting or practitioner that we're supporting. Then we have to collect all our data, our teapots, my favorite, of course. But if you're doing tippy toes or FB, whatever you're doing, you got to make sure you've got all that good data. Then we have to meet with our teachers, meet with our teams, and the scheduling right now is just been a nightmare. Everybody is out sick, so we're covering multiple jobs. This person is not in class. This person is not available to meet. So we have to be really flexible in the way that we meet. Um, a couple of days ago, I drove an hour out to my program just to get there and realize my teacher was called out sick. 
So we have to be really flexible. We have to be on our game. We have to be organized and ready. Um, and we have to make sure that we're doing all these things at the same time in a way that feels accommodating to the program or the team that or the teacher that you're supporting that particular day. So with this, we hope that you will take some time to examine how you are organizing your coaching caseload, um, maybe setting some new priorities for yourself, maybe looking at a tool or maybe a strategy that you always use, and this is your default, and maybe thinking about tweaking that up a little bit. Um, we want you to really pay attention to how you're stepping into each coaching relationship, knowing that each practitioner, each team, each teacher is um, may have different needs at that particular time. And just like we ask our teachers to do for their children, we want to make sure that we're differentiating our supports to our practitioners and our teachers but still always making it collaborative and feeling um, like that partnership, like we're just two people having a conversation back and forthing ideas. So the first thing that I want to show um, and share with you, and I'm, we're really, really excited about this resource at NCPMI, and I think you will be too, but it is called the... Um, practice-based coaching resource collection. So if you go to the NCPMI Challenging Behavior website and you, um, this is how I always find things, go to the resource library and for that specific search, you add in practice-based coaching resource collection. This will be the thing that pops up for you. This is the first page. This is what it looks like, but take a look at this. So this is the resource table. When you pull up this new resource collection, you see at the top, you, you can access lots of different kinds of supports depending on um, how you like to look at things, how your teachers or how your teams that you're supporting, um, what you think will land best with them. So there's checklists, there's tip sheets, there's videos, there's webinars, there's web pages, all um, sourced for you by topic. So if you're just interested in learning or getting some new information about PBC basics, you go to that first, that um, bright orange column, and then you can look, there's a webinar, there's a couple different video testimonials, there's a web page that you can go to, and all these will be hyperlinked. So if you're interested in seeing the video about outcomes for children, you just click on that blue link and you'll get to the video um, automatically. How exciting is that? And so um, if you're interested in looking for a guide, if you're interested in, in kind of breaking down that coaching cycle and really thinking about maybe collaborative partnerships or focused observation and you need a resource around that, then you need to go to that green column and you can look down there and see what kinds of, um, there's some forms, there's some glossaries and definitions, there's also some videos that you may watch, again, all hyperlinked, you just click the blue link on the form or the video that you're interested in, and you get there right away. There's also um, a section around resources, so any of the coaching resources that you may be interested in, and then also my favorite is data tools. So if you're interested in a particular um, data tool around practice-based coaching, you can go to that gray column, take a look. There's webinars, there's videos for data entry tutorials around the logs. Um, there's that coaching strategies tool that you may want to pull down and take a look at what strategies you're really comfortable with and maybe 
tweaking those up a little bit, finding a different strategy on that menu and trying that one out, learning about it, um, getting some examples and then trying that out in a different classroom. So this is the table that goes with the new resource collection. This is just one page. Um, this um, table extends for, I think it's like five or six pages. So there's lots and lots of resources that you um, can access. And I think you will are gonna be really um, excited when you dig in and take a look. So it kind of puts all those things that we've been talking about um, that we may have used in the past, but it puts it all in one place for us so we can find it, kind of categorized it, and we can find it really easy. Um, and hopefully maybe start taking a look and finding things that I never do that. I've never used that. Or I want to do this a little bit better Then you may go to that part and kind of um, find a good resource for that. So all in one place now in this new resource collection. Exciting? I was really excited. The other resource that I want to take you to is the Unpacking the Coaching Webinars. And um, I'm sure you know, but it was a surprise to me. This webinar series has go been going on for about two years. So we have all the titles, all the webinars recorded with the handouts and materials all located in one place. So you go to the training and technical assistance on the NCPMI website, you go to training and technical assistance, you drop down to the webinars, and then it shows you the different icons for the different webinar series. There's also a schedule at the bottom of this webpage. So if there's a new webinar coming up, it would be listed there. But if we're interested in the unpacking the coaching, you would click on that icon and then you go to the list starting from new to um, the further um, away types of or the sessions. So you might want to take a look at the, the one that happened in November, which was the mot motivational interviews, which was really amazing if you didn't see it. Um, and you wanted to, you could click on that blue view button off to the right hand side, and it takes you to a page that looks like this. So it's the title of that particular webinar, a brief description of what that webinar um, was about how long in duration and when it was actually recorded. And then you can click on the actual webinar itself and you can watch it in its entirety um, or you can kind of rewind and fast forward to parts that you wanna remember or maybe something that you wanted to think about and you wrote it down, but you can't find where you wrote it. So you can go back and you can watch it um, again any of the webinars that we've done for the past two years, they're all located in that same spot. So you can um, go through and um, take a look at those underneath the video link, the, all the handouts that were included will be connected and linked there as well. I, um, tend to use these webinars a lot when I'm thinking like, um, about refreshing a certain component. Um, somebody told me not that long ago, there was an action planning ab just about setting good goal statements, um, writing action plans to support that goal statement. So there's a webinar around that particular PBC component. So you could go back to that one, you could watch it, um, and you can pull the materials from it. You can think about the resources um, that were shared during that and kind of go back and find those as well. So they're all there. You can go back to them as many times as you want um, and take a listen and take a look at their resources. So I, in particular, do that quite often when I'm thinking about 
God, I'm stuck on writing an action plan goal, or I'm stuck on how to um, reflect and get this teacher to reflect during our debrief sessions, I can go back and take a look at the webinar that went along with that PBC component, maybe give myself some new ideas or new resources to think about. So this is just kind of a breakdown of how that when you go to that unpacking the coaching webinar page, how it looks. So it gives you the top, the coaching topic, um, a little short description. If you're interested in it, then you click on it and then you get that page with the um the bit the video link that you could actually link to. So there's lots of titles um, on the webinar, some that kind of break down PBC basics, some that give you teacher's perspective on practice-based coaching um, if you need help on buy-in or um, teachers just need to hear it from other teachers, you can maybe share pieces of one of these webinars with them. Um, if you need to talk about data collection around, there's obviously topics around that. So you can take a look at any of those topics at any time. And um, maybe that will give you a little boost to refresh some of your ideas in your toolbox. I'm a really visual learner. So for me, getting to hear these videos and watch them over and over, that is what really sticks in my brain. So I really appreciate having all of these webinars available to go back to. I can read something and that's fine, but if I see it and I hear somebody talking about it and showing me examples, that's really how I learn best. So I really take to these webinars. I think it's really um, a cool feature. The other resource I wanted to talk about is manuals. And so we have several coaching manuals. Some of these are not really new per se, but um, they may have gotten a refresh lately or um, maybe something we just want to bring it back up so we can take a look at the resources and maybe refresh what we're doing as coaches. So the first one I wanted to highlight is the Classroom Practitioner Coaching Guide. So this is the guide that is meant for the classroom coach to use um, to kind of guide their coaching process. It breaks down per PBC component, gives you lots of resources, um, tip sheets, ideas for how to support that you can always um, download the guide or you can use it electronically if you save it to your um, desktop. I've done it both ways. Again, because I'm a really visual learner, I like to have the paper copy and then I like to make notes on it. And that is kind of how I learn, but whatever works for you. Denise, can I make a little announcement in terms? I know- yeah the classroom practitioner coach guide, um, we are expecting to release an early intervention um, practitioner coach guide as well um, in the next year. So um, that will be a new resource that's coming that has a lot of these valuable resources for those who are coaching early intervention providers. Yes, that's so exciting and I can't wait to see it. So I know you guys are working hard on it. So this is kind of how that practitioner coaching guide is laid out. So there's um, three pretty separate sections of the guide. Um, first, getting ready. So how, as a coach, do I get myself organized? Um, kind of breaks down step by step on how, what things you should be doing to get yourself organized. How do you establish that partnership? kind of resources and tips around getting that partnership going. The second section is about enacting. So it really breaks down those PBC components like the shared goals and action plans, the focus observation and the reflection and feedback. So it goes into those three components really specifically, 
gives you tips how to get started, gives you some scenarios, gives you some forms and resources you might like to use. And then the last is about data decision making. So how do we um, take data on our coaching supports um, all, as all our tools do in NCPMI, there's a look, think, act worksheet that goes along with the classroom coaching log. So that's in this guide and kind of um, step by step on how to use the log, when to use it, what kind of questions you can ask yourself um, around your coaching log. So these are just some examples of how the different sections are laid out. So this is a sample from the enacting coaching. So that um, second section, and this one is about shared goals and action plans. So it gives you a little description of what it is and why it's important. Um, and then like a step-by-step -step on how to do that particular component or how to get yourself through that. Um, some things to talk about with the teacher and then some examples of what that component could possibly look like. I really like this guide because I think if you're struggling with how to get it started or if your regular way of starting your coaching process is not really landing with this particular teacher, this might give you an example or some different kinds of ways uh, to start the discussion that you hadn't thought of in the past. So this, I think, is a really good resource just to kind of refresh again. The second guide that I wanted to point out is the program leadership team guide for practice-based coaching. So this guide in particular is meant for the program leadership team. So the team that comes together at that program or that center to support pyramid model implementation. And this guide is, um, meant to just give that leadership team a brief overview of practice-based coaching and the three essential components. It doesn't go near as deep as the practitioner coach, but just give them a kind of an overview of what's going on or what should be happening during coaching. It talks about scheduling coaching and gives them an outline or a plan, how to plan for that process. Um, who, what kinds of teachers should go through coaching first, second, that kind of thing. It also gives kind of a table on how to set a coaching caseload. So we always get that question, like how many teachers should I coach? How frequently should I be doing this? And that um, this guide kind of walks you through how to plan that out for your specific center. So this one um, is really good if you're work if you're a program implementation coach, and you're supporting a new team, a new leadership team who's just starting to think about classroom coaching or practitioner coaching. This is a really good one to bring out and kind of get them orientated to the process and what it should look like and how to structure that coaching so that it happens in a really um, in a really structured way. And then the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is, again, it's not new guide, but it did get a little refresh um, a year or more ago, um, is the Pyramid Model Equity Coaching Guide. So this guide is meant for the practitioner coach to use when they're concerned or they want to start working on issues of equity or um maybe cultural responsiveness within a particular classroom. So um, it go the first chat there's four chapters in this guide. The first chapter is a little checklist that the coach can go through on their own. They can go through with the teacher. It's not meant to be like as rigorous as like a teapot or something like that, but it's just really, do we have these things in place or are we missing these kinds of supports? 
So we go through the, that checklist. I think there's like 18 questions. Um, they are defined and there's examples of what it should look like. So you go through those first 18 things. Um, and then the second chapter has you looking for patterns in those checklists. So if you checked off, yeah, we're missing a lot of these things, then you kind of set um, priorities for where you want to start working. And so once you set an idea for, yeah, I really want to support this teacher into creating an environment that is inclusive and it you support all kinds of different cultures and backgrounds with maybe um, toys or manipulatives or songs or so it gives you some ideas. The third chapter you're going to love once you figure out what um, question or what theme you want to work on, you go to chapter three and then it gives you all kinds of resources to support learning of that particular goal. Um, could be a webinar, could be a tip sheet, could be um, uh, a testimonial, but there's some something that helps you bring that concept to the teacher in a learning kind of collaborative way. And then the fourth chapter of this particular guide, if you're struggling with, as a coach, you're struggling on how to start this conversation around equity, around culturally responsive practices, practices with the teacher, it gives you some discussion starters. Some um, So if you're getting this kind of a pushback, then here's some ways that you can talk about that. If you're getting this kind of a statement, here's some ways that you can start that. So the fourth chapter is really about um, how to get it started and how to work with it. So if you haven't taken a look at the equity coaching guide in a while, take a look at it. I think it's um, it'll be really valuable once you get that coaching partnership going and you've got that relationship going, but you feel like things are not um, as equitable as you'd like to see them happening in the classroom. So the last thing that I wanna talk about is the coaching log. And this is not a new resource. It's something that we've had at NCPMI for a long time, but I don't feel like as coaches, we use it or um, we use it to make changes or we use it um, as frequently, as consistently as we should. So it's something I'm going to suggest that you take a look at if you haven't taken a look at it in a while. So we do have the practitioner coach log, and then we have an early intervention log. So if you're um, coaching in classroom programs, or if you're a coaching in EI, there's different logs to support those that work. Um, the I'm going to talk about mostly the practitioner coaching log and Ashley, you can jump in if there's any differences. It's pretty much measuring the same. They're measuring the same thing. They're measuring the um, PBC cycle, um, but just in the context that you're delivering your support. So um, on the on the log, what you're really want to get at capture is the number of action plan goals, the number that you're working on, so that are in progress, and the number that are completed. Um, really important, and I think this is where a lot of people, a lot of coaches struggle, is it wants you to capture a coaching cycle. And so we can analyze and look at coaching cycles, the number that you've attempted, the number that are completed. And I'm going to talk about cycles in a minute. It also has you um, taking or charting the types of strategies that you're using with different teachers. So the strategies that you use during your observation and then the strategies that you use during your debrief session with that teacher. It also captures the amount of time that you spend in coaching, which I think is a really valuable piece of information to um, for the coach, but also for your leadership team or your state 
level team that is supporting coaching fiscally, they need to know what's going on and how much time this is taking to get teachers to fidelity. And then there's a place where you can um, write yourself notes if you need to. So as with all the NCPMI tools, there is an Excel workbook that goes with the classroom coaching log. All at, when you open the, the Excel workbook, that little blue hyperlink, and it's on all of the Excel workbooks, but it gives you a step-by-step -step voiced over tutorial on how to enter into the Excel spreadsheet. So you can't mess it up. And I'm not an Excel person. Um, Excel kind of scares me, to be honest, but I can use it and I can make sense of it. And I've never broken one of the workbooks. So you can do this. Take a deep breath. Watch the tutorial. It will help a lot before you start trying to enter. Um, and also on that front page, it's locked. It's an information page. So those red lines tell you tell you what part, what information, what data point goes in each cell of the workbook. So if you don't want to watch the video, then you can kind of read through this front page, this information page, um, and it will give you the same kinds of information that you get on the tutorial. So like I said, the log is really concerned or the main measure is the coaching cycle. And so when we say coaching cycle, what we mean is that you've done all three of those essential components of the PBC cycle. So you have to have done shared goals and action planning. You have to have done a focus observation and you have to have done a reflection and feedback session. So those three parts equal one coaching cycle. And I think um, that is confusing at times because those parts can happen on different days, on different parts of the days, um, take different amounts of time, different strategies used during, so they feel kind of different. It feels like you've done different things and they've served ser different purposes. And that may be true, but it's all part of that practice-based coaching cycle. So I want you to kind of think about that. And anytime that that pro practitioner coach log is asking you, how many cycles have you completed? What cycle are you on? You're thinking about those three parts. When did I do the goal planning, the focus observation, and the reflection and feedback? Remember, there's also that tutorial you can go back to if you need to, but we're really going to focus on those three parts, those three essential components as we go into working um, with our coaching log. So this is what the um, Excel spreadsheet looks like. It first asks you about focused observation strategies. So of course you have your teacher ID because just like everything else, we don't put teachers' names onto our Excel file. So we have an ID. Um, how many goals are you writing? Did you initially write with your teacher? So typically one or two. Um, what cycle number are you on? So how many of those three components are you working on or have completed. The date that you did the focus observation, and then you just go across and you, um, it's a drop down menu. And so if you observed, you click, yes, I observed. If you videotaped, you click, yes, I videotaped. Um, and you just go across and say what strategies you used during the focus observation. 
And then the very last line on um, this page is the total time that you spent observing. And so um, you'll notice that there's space for multiple dates um, under one cycle. And it can happen that your observation may have gotten um, paused for whatever reason, or maybe you wanted to see that particular strategy happening during a different routine. So you come back and forth and, and that's okay, but it's still just one cycle until you do that debrief. Yeah. One thing with the time, um, I just want to add that in the early intervention um, practitioner coach log, it is the spreadsheet is set up the exact same way. It's just the types of the focus observation strategies might look a little different. Instead of teacher ID, it'll say EI ID. Mm -hmm. But um, something we get asked about, because unlike in a classroom setting where, you know, the coach is usually a part of the program, they don't have to travel anywhere, um, that early intervention providers could include their travel time in that focus observation time, because that's going to be very important for their leadership team to know how much time to provide coaches to do their coaching, as well as for the coach to know, hey, when I'm scheduling visits, if I'm traveling for it, I need to know how much time to plan in my schedule. So that's just something to consider as well. That's great. Good to know. Thank you, Ashley. And so the second part of the Excel workbook is the debrief, documenting your debriefing strategies. So again, you just go across and you drop down on the yes, if you used that particular strategy during that debriefing session, you list the total amount of time that you spent in that particular debrief for that cycle. <clears throat> and then the last thing is the action plan goals. So if you completed an action plan goal during that cycle, then you just add the number on that first box. And then if you wrote a new goal, during that debriefing, during that cycle, then you say yes. And then if you wrote more than one goal, then you write the number of goals underneath that. So it's pretty simple data that you're inputting into the work, um, into the workbook. So um, the, the um, log really wants to document how many action plan goals that you've completed, how many new goals you're working on. Um, we want to show progress in the number of goals that we're working on and completing with our teachers. So if you, you can take a look at your log and you see that you're not really progressing on the number of action plans completed with a particular teacher, and that's something that you need to strategize around and plan on and figure out um, kind of problem solve what's happening with this particular teacher. So some of the questions that we can answer as coaches from our log, if we're collecting data from our coaching log, is um, are our teachers meeting their goals? Are we still stuck on one goal or two goals? What kinds of strategies are we using for different teachers? Are we using the same um, observation strategies every single time for every single teacher? Could that be one of the reasons why we're not completing goals? We're not meeting that teacher's need. <laughs> Have we used data to adjust any of the strategies so we're making our coaching sessions as effective as we possibly can? And then we want to know how many cycles, so how many times we've gone through those three components with each of our practitioners.
there's lots of things we can get out of it, but just some core questions that you want to ask yourself. And so remember, there's look, think, act worksheets that go along with both of these coaching logs with the EI log and the classroom coaching log. It um, first has you looking at the data. So what kind, what are you seeing? Are there patterns? Are there trends? If you're seeing a particular pattern, then it asks some think questions, um, thinking about what you can, what you're seeing and why. And then if you're seeing certain things, then some possible action steps. So um, remember, you can download those Look, Think, Act work, um, worksheets when you download the Excel. So that was really the resources that we wanted to share today. Um, yeah. I you learned something or got a new trick for your toolbox. Um, remember what Ashley said, all of the handouts are online. So um, Ashley. You... Yeah, um, no, we have a few questions if if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Denise, that was really informative. And I keep just seeing in the chat how helpful ev everyone feels. Um, really inspired by everything that you've been sharing today. Um, so just a few questions. What um, what if people want to stay updated on new coaching resources as they come out? Like, how could they do that? So when you go to the NCPMI website, challengingbehavior.org, um, and you go to that resource library, all the newest resources are going to pop up first. So the things that have gotten refreshed or just added, those things come up first on the resource library. But then if you want to click just um, the search tab, you can do coaching and then all the newest coaching resources would come up too. So that's a good way to do it. Um, also, if you're not already signed up for the um, pyramid um, newsletter. Make sure you do that because we'll always highlight um, good new stuff on the wet on the newsletter. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I was thinking the newsletter too. Um, and then just one more. Um, I know that many of our coaches, if they haven't already, but they're always looking for ways to like feel supported and connect to other coaches. Mm -hmm. um, so. Are there ways, you know, within their state, um, you know, that they could do that or based on some of the resources you shared today, like within those coaching, you know, let's call it a community of practice. What are some resources that might really benefit a community of practice of coaches? I know there's a lot of state organizations that do hold um, monthly coaching meetings. If your state doesn't, it would be something that um, you may want to talk to your state team about. Um, we highly recommend those kinds of supports. It just makes our coaching work better, right? When we can brainstorm and back and forth with someone else who's doing the same thing on a regular basis. So if it's not something that your state does, or maybe they do, and you're just not aware, I think um, getting in touch with someone from your state team would be my first probably suggestion. If it's not something that's happening already, then um, maybe it's a good suggestion. We do always have um, work groups, um, TA, technical assistance around coaching that we um, have people apply for at NCPMI. So if any of those opportunities are up, it'll be on the website that you can look into those too. Thank you. Um, and then I know we have one, I think it kind of refers to how you were talking about the coaching log and using it to inform our coaching. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens if you're noticing, you know, a, a, a coach is not reaching a goal, um, they still want to work on it. Um, you know, is it, 
um, you know, the person here, uh, Janice is at saying like, you know, what if it's not that they're not achieving the goal, but maybe they want to dig deeper into the goal. Is there mm -hmm. a way to capture that? Yeah. So I think, um, if the goal that you initially wrote has been met, I would go ahead and put that goal on completion. And then maybe you want to extend that goal and maybe to a new routine, a different routine, or you want to maybe target a, a specific child or do some kind of differentiating around that goal. Um, I would create a different goal. I would just, maybe it's an extension, but it's different because it's going to have different action steps, might have different resources that you need, maybe a different achievement statement. So I would write um, a different goal. I would actually pull out my action planning form and write a new goal statement because it's going to be around um, instead of circle time. Now we're really going to be looking at set, doing this during centers and small group. And so I would um, definitely do that. That's a great um, and yeah. that's a great way to keep teachers motivated too when they can check something off. Um, that feels good to me. And I know it feels good for teachers too. Like we did that. Congratulations. That looks great. Let's think about extending that. And so writing a brand new goal, I think will help. Yeah, um, I agree. I even, it makes me think about how, um, working with a, a coachy right now, um, who's working on transitions and like thinking about all the steps there are within a transition that you could, you could break those into individual goals too. Mm -hmm. Um, so just thinking about like going back and thinking about your goal writing and maybe like watching some of those webinars, like Denise said, of like refreshing some of those ideas of what that um, looks like. Well, it looks like we um, are at our time. So thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Denise, for being our tour guide through all of these <laughs> amazing resources. Um, and we will definitely keep you updated as we release more. I see a lot of people interested in the newsletter to keep updated on that. Um, so thank you. I'm going to hand things over to Victor. All right. Thank you very much to all of our panelists for their wonderful insights. Your feedback is very important to the work that we do. Please remember to provide your feedback on this webinar with our post webinar survey by typing the web address shown on this slide into your internet browser. Your certificate of attendance will appear once you submit the survey. We invite you to visit our website, challengingbehavior.org, to sign up for our upcoming webinars, access recordings, download pyramid model resources, and more. And thank you to our funder for making this webinar possible. This concludes our webinar. Thank you all and have a great rest of your day.